Welcome back to the HDR Masterclass. You've actually made it. You did it. You've come through, what, about five hours of training uh, concerning HDR photography. We've, uh, we've covered so much here. Uh, we talked about the objectives of uh, this course. What we wanted to do is to bring you to a point where you can actually do uh, uh, optimum field capture for HDR photography purposes. And then we talked about uh, this course bringing you to a point where you could perform proficient tone mapping. So we discussed that. We uh, went through a number of examples. I hope that those examples gave you some inspiration, certainly some ideas as to what it is that you can do with HDR photography. We defined HDR. Uh, earlier in the course, we talked about the problems that we're trying to solve with it. And, uh, and I hope that that was very valuable to help you understand what high dynamic range photography uh, is attempting to do. We also talked about HDR benefits. And um, uh, I personally feel that the benefits of HDR are certainly worth the additional effort. It is a uh, it's a tool that you have in your photography. Whether your photography is for personal creative endeavor or you're a professional, HDR photography will allow you to go beyond what the camera itself and what a single frame photo can provide you. And so that's quite important. We talked about uh, fundamentals of um, uh, HDR photography. We talked about the capabilities of the human vision system in, in contrast to the limitations of the camera. And so I hope that the fundamentals had really prepared you for the next sec segment where we talked about capturing for HDR. And I think now that, um, I think you might appreciate better than perhaps before you started this course, that capturing for HDR is really not a difficult uh, endeavor. It really is a matter of uh, performing a series of captures if the scene calls for it. That is, if the camera's dynamic range isn't capable of capturing all of the light levels within the scene, then uh, the idea would be to uh, capture a sequence of, of, of images uh, in a particular scene with a particular camera and with the objective of having enough frames that will capture all of the light levels within that scene. So that really is uh, you know, a, a primary objective of an optimum field capture. In addition, we want to capture as much of the detail. In other words, we don't want uh, loss of pixel information in our captured sequence. We um, then proceeded to talk about the field guide. I have it right here. So the capture field guide should provide you with a field uh, uh, memory jogger, if you will, to help you realize and, and remember some of the settings that uh, can be quite important to you when you're working with HDR in terms of uh, field capture. Then we moved into tone mapping. And during the tone mapping segment, we talked about the workflow. And it really comes down to taking your field capture, which will typically be a multiple image series. Again, it could be two, three, five, seven, nine. All right. And the idea in the tone mapping uh, phase is to merge your uh, multiple images together. We talked a little bit about a single image tone, uh, tone mapping, but 
this course really focused on the multiple image capture sequence. So the, you know, you're going to, uh, during the tone mapping phase, you'll use your software to merge the images together. Uh, and during the merging, there's an alignment process that goes on so that you have the best possible detail uh, is reserved, preserved. You're not, um, uh, you're not having a misalignment uh, of the pixels from one image to the next. During the merge, we talked about uh, de-ghosting. Um, and in some cases, the de-ghosting is quite important. Eh, but if you have an optimum field capture, where you're really paying attention to the kind of movement that might be happening in the scene, the idea is, is that you're not really going to have that many issues when it actually comes to um, uh, de-ghosting. And uh, we did go down and we talked about the, the various settings pertaining to Photomatix Pro. And, uh, and really, I just, I just really want to emphasize that, that you don't really have to have Photomatix Pro. I focused on that in this course for consistency purposes, but there's many, many different softwares out there. And we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. I have a slide that will really give you some uh, valuable tips for the HDR-related software that's currently out there. This course was a very, very good foundation for you to, uh, to appreciate and understand and prepare for actually practicing HDR photography. But your learning really is just beginning. HDR uh, photography just gives you so much more to work with. It, um, it, it, uh, it helps you understand your camera better. It gets you more fully involved with your camera. I mean, you're utilizing functionality that you might not have otherwise have, have, uh, have utilized, such as automatic exposure bracketing. It gets you into your camera more. It, um, it, uh, it helps you understand imaging a little bit better. You understand more of the technicals uh, that uh, pertain to imaging. Well, you understand RAW versus JPEG better, and perhaps a better appreciation for why you would want to use RAW in not only in HDR photography, but really anywhere you go. So, um, you know, the thing about, about tone mapping, tone mapping gets you into your image. It brings you in. It, may, it gives you direct, immediate involvement with your image. And because, well, and you're working with a 32-bit file, so you can just do so much more with uh, your 32-bit file when you're working, you know, for purposes of HDR. So I have found that tone mapping is actually really helping me have an increased awareness of the image, uh, the, the attributes that can be applied, and uh, it really helps me uh, fine-tune my skills in terms of image preparation. And um, uh, I really probably can't emphasize this more. At least I found it true for myself. HDR photography really does help me or has helped me and continues to help me enhance my photography as a fulfillment objective. It, uh, it, it's, it's really a nice thing because you, you not only are working with your camera in a, a, in a more, in a more um, closely associated uh, manner in the field, but you're actually working with your images as well. Yeah, so I see HDR is really a fulfillment. I don't really see it as a method per se. It is a method, and I'll utilize that method uh, quite often for purposes of obtaining a uh, high quality uh, image that I was able to fine tune and bring to a point that, that I wanted to, whether it's realism or creativity or whatever. But I have found that HDR is actually really a fulfillment of the work that I do in the field pertaining to photography. 
Um, and really, uh, be creative. Be creative with HDR because it will help you really to enjoy photography more. All right, it, it really is as simple as that. Uh, the, more, the more you know, the more skills you have, the more creative uh, you become, the more expansion you're actually going to have of your skills because you're pushing the limit. You're pushing what you know. You're testing, trying, like I was telling you in the, back in the tone mapping segment, you know, take that uh, setting and you really yank it up and see what happens. That's not only how you expand your knowledge, but actually how you can have a good time working with your images. There are many resources available, uh, far, far more resources than when I got involved uh, first with uh, HDR way back in 2009. Uh, it's so it's so beautiful what that they've done, books and software. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you know the thing is, really have fun with HDR. It really doesn't have to be a lot of work. It doesn't have to be a lot of pressure. Just have fun with it, and just just have fun. I, what else can I say? Now, there are there are so many software packages out there. It, it is absolutely amazing. And I'll be the first to admit that I have not done every single one of them. Uh, I, I like Photomatix Pro. I'm not endorsing it here. I want you to try different softwares. I have tried different softwares as well. In some cases, I was disappointed. In some cases, it was really slow to, to do the merging. Photomatix is, is very fast. And, uh, or there was a feature lacking, or I didn't like the way that they presented the histogram, which is an important tool to me. The, the point I want to make is that you really, really are well advised to just try different packages. All right, so some of them cost money. Now, this one here is 65. I don't know. I, I haven't I haven't tried that particular one. This one here is free. You may find that a free software application is just as good as the one you might pay hundreds of dollars for. You have to go find out. Go find out. Go try different software packages. Um, and, uh, you know, more. The uh, Aurora HDR is relatively new on the market. That's uh, that's. Uh, from uh, Trey Radcliffe and uh, some of the people that he's been working with. It's Mac only, uh, but you know, new stuff is still coming on the market and there's stuff that's been on the market for a long time. Photomatix Pro, that's the one I like. Well, they're currently at uh, version five as of this taping and uh, they're working on version six. So lots of good software out there. Um, uh, what can I tell you? I mean, there's just been so many marvelous uh, books that have been published on, on HDR. A lot of very talented people out there who, are, who have taken the time, the effort, and it's no small effort, to write a book, get it published, and, and just really help people understand what this HDR is and help them be able to establish a skill foundation. It's just remarkable what they've done. More books. My personal favorite is this one by Christian Block. This is uh, edition two. His first edition was also quite good. But this, this thing is massive. There's a tremendous amount of information here. And this was published in 2012. Still valid information all the way through this book. This is a, a marvelous book. You should get it. Even if you have to get it used, this would be a good investment. All right? So the HDR Handbook 2.0 by Christian Block. I'm not endorsing it. I don't have any, I'm not going to make any commissions on it, but I have found this to be my personal favorite, and I've devoured this. This, I would almost say, is my HDR Bible. So uh, that's a highly recommended book. Now, just want to want to leave you with a big warm thank you for 
attending this course, for sticking with it, for being here, for learning, for letting me teach you what I know. And I really, really hope that your ultimate reward for attending to this course and practicing HDR is that you're able to create memorable and remarkable images, stunning images, images that you perhaps uh, had thought were out of your reach. You don't have to be a professional photographer. You don't have to be a highly skilled photographer. You don't have to be a photographer that's been uh, working with um, uh, film and, and digital forever. Anybody can do HDR and anybody can enjoy the many, many benefits that HDR will bring. And the thing about HDR is it's, it's a wonderful springboard to learn more, to enjoy photography uh, as a creative outlet, as a fulfillment. It's uh, really a good thing to get into and to practice and build on. So again, thank you for being part of this course. I'm going to do one more thing and I am going to present to you a series of my own HDR processed images in somewhat of a non-themed basis. And I'm going to set that to some music, some piano music that my wife has authored. Uh, absolutely beautiful music from a very, very talented person. And I'm going to be uh, just taking a few more minutes here and leaving you with a gift. The gift is a series of my own images set to wonderful piano music that you can just kind of sit back and enjoy and perhaps more importantly give you the inspiration that you too can do these kind of images and you too can enjoy HDR, use it as an investment in your skills and in your own photography fulfillment. So thank you for being here. I really was privileged to be able to share my knowledge and my own enthusiasm for HDR photography. Please enjoy the upcoming images. Thank you.